the only thing I use is auto format on save. And it took me like until two years ago to get there. Like I, I like my editors to do nothing. We've all heard enough of everyone's best practices in software development. And today we're here with Mitchell Hashimoto to hear about his worst practice. So Mitchell, please tell us more about yourself and what type of software you write. Uh, so I am a software engineer. I co-founded a company called HashiCorp. Um, most people are aware of the, the tools HashiCorp makes, and that's the type of software that I generally write, which is um, you know cloud-based, like dev tools, deployment tooling, um, infrastructure automation, things like that. I would say that for the past 10 years, that's what I've been writing. And then <clears throat> more recently, I've been, uh, you know, I'm off all of those teams now. It's a big enough company. And I've been experimenting a lot more with, I would say, like lower level programming. So nothing that's directly applicable to HashiCorp. This is more of a free time sort of thing. But um, getting back to my, uh, I would, some sort of roots, I guess, of growing up and doing, you know, C style stuff. So um, a little bit all over the place. But I would say the, the not a lot of web programming is, I would put it that way. Got it. So tell us, what is your worst practice? So I think my worst practice is a little bit more modern. Um, I don't think this would be, would have been a worst practice maybe 10 years ago, but it raises eyebrows now when I tell people, but I don't use, you know, I use Vim, but I don't use any sort of code intelligence, language server, autocomplete, anything. Like the, the only thing I use is auto format on save. And it took me like until two years ago to get there. Like I. I like my editors to do nothing. So that that kind of freaks people out. And I, I've gotten a lot of people saying, you know, oh, that's uh, you're working so much slower than you could be, or how can you possibly work that way? Or it's whatever. But that's that's just how it works. If you have a library that you're trying to use, how do you look up, you know, another function in the API? You know, like, how do you find yeah. what you're looking for? My learning style is reading the reference manual, at least skimming it ahead of time. Maybe that's an, because I started programming you know, 20, 30 years ago, but um, it's that, so in my mind, I sort of have a rough idea. Like I may not remember the exact arguments, the exact capitalization or wording, but like, I'm like, oh yeah, there's a function like connect underscore whatever. You know, when I was small, when I was young, I had a, um, two hour a week computer time limit, um, up until I was 18 and it was a week and wow. the two hours also, if I had to do homework, like type in Microsoft word type of paper, it counted. So, um, I would end up doing a lot of programming by either doing it on paper or doing it in my head. And like, to the point where I was like, okay, when I get to the computer, I have to just get it out and run it. It has to work um, because I don't have time to like go back and forth. And I think that practice just like got me really comfortable with this. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't need autocomplete. I love that. That's amazing. When you have to do builds, you know, so you save file, you get an auto format. Great. Now you want to do an incremental build, you know, assuming it's a compiled language or even interpreted, you want sure. to run it again. What do you, what's your workflow for that? Yeah. Tab over to a shell. I don't use a shell in an editor. Um, well, I run Vim in my terminal. So it's mostly like switching over to another split or another tab or whatever, um, depending on the operating system on. And then I just, I use the terminal as is. Yeah. And there's a lot of tools out there now for, more advanced kind of completion, like autopilot and, and LLM based tools. Have you tried any of those hmm. to compare? Uh, I, that might be the only thing that brings me back into some of this stuff. I, I haven't like integrated it into my editor yet. I mean, I've tried it. I don't really feel like I have a need for it yet. I would say sometimes when I'm confused by a certain problem or there's something just really dumb that is, that I know like is easy to solve, but I don't know how to do it off the top of my head. I'll just like pop into like, a chat GPT style session and do it. Um, like recently I was doing some web programming stuff and I just forgot um, the JavaScript way to manipulate some data and modify the DOM basically. I was like, I know this is super easy. So I'm right. just going to ask it and it dropped, dropped it out. And I don't just like copy and paste it just, but that like refreshes everything and I copy and paste and edit, but that's pretty much it. But I think eventually, yeah, that's the one thing that I'll have to figure out because I do think it is helpful. Yeah, it's cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on and telling us about your worst practice. Thanks. Yeah, no problem.